And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Hi. Hi. It's time, buddy. It's time. It's time. Yes, buddy, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here on the Pope on Film podcast to twist our way into the third and final part of our big show. I've got a mouthful of pizza. I really should have thought this through. Oh, real professional here. And it is said, third act, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new, all yo's movie of the week. And this week, we continue our summer of yo with a look at the shittiest Rocky movie, the 1990 film Rocky V. Yes. Um, explanation of theme summer. Every summer on the podcast, we go through a theme. We did the summer of Star Wars, the summer of Saw, the summer of Fred Willard, the summer of um, the worst movies, according to IMDb, and the summer of COVID exploitation. Uh, there's a movie out there called Coronavirus Conspiracy, which is actually just about um, aliens and harambe and it's dumb and stupid and i love it um this summer we are doing the summer of yo where we are watching the entire rocky franchise and boxing helena because boxing and we are uh, counting all the yo's i didn't just watch this film i watched the film and then if i if I would play scenes over and over and over again to make sure that I could count each and every yo. So this time, I think I have the definitive number. I, I have no idea where you got that number because we are both sitting here like. <clears throat> the problem and is, we is would, that when we I watch would rewind Rocky, and go back in case we thought we missed a yo or something. I got yeah. 18. When I, when I watch Rocky 2 and or Rocky 3 and Rocky 4, oftentimes I will, I had much lower numbers than you did because I get so invested in the film that I forget to count the yo's. But this movie, I fucking hate the shit out of Rocky V. So I, there were times when I wasn't even paying attention at all to the film. I was just here with a clipboard and a pen just waiting. And I, I wasn't even really watching the movie. I would just go, okay, let me go back two minutes. There might have been a yo I missed. Okay, let me he hear that scene again. He does say yo Rocky. Okay, boom. And so I, I went through this with a fine tooth comb specifically. I was only watching it to listen to yo's and not to actually pay attention to the action because... There hardly is any. This movie fucking sucks. Yes, it does. I hate this film. But before we get to uh, just destroying this film, Bunny, can you can you give me some guesses as to who choreographed the final street fight in Rocky V? At first, you're going to go, wait, what the fuck? But then eventually, the more you think about it, the more it will make sense. Uh, I'm going with Paulie. No. He was on the set anyway. Staggering around. Yeah, I think Paulie. I, no. Paul, um, actor Burt Young did not choreograph the final fight. I am shocked at the fact that Burt Young is an actor. Oh, 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 Was it pink? No, but that's a good, that is a good guess. Um, I am shocked that Burt Young is an actor because I only have ever seen him as Polly. I went through his IMDb 
a page and it's like, wow, look at all of these movies that actor Burt Young has been in, none of which I have seen. Okay, okay. Then let me let me save you some time, okay? All of those credits, they're all Paulie. That's, That's just who the fuck he is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Burt Young movies. Sarah Q, never saw it. Bottom of the Ninth, I don't think that's a real film. Blue Lake Butcher, like what the fuck? Club Fed, I've never seen that. The Boys of Sunset Ridge, that looks like you made that up. Back, He was in Back to School? I haven't seen that since I was like a teen. Yeah, he was uh, Rodney Dangerfield's bodyguard. Oh yeah, I don't remember that at all. Mickey Blue Eyes, I never saw. That was at the peak of uh, Hugh Grant's uh, Hugh Grantiness, but I never saw that movie. He was in Amneville 2, The Possession? Uh, if yeah, you he say was, so. He was the pig creature. Oh. <laughs> he was in Going Overboard with Adam Sandler? Okay. Like, I, I, I guess he had an acting career, but I... That that all seems pretty sus to me. Okay. Oh well, you the, you missed you missed his outstanding starring performance in Convoy. Convoy. Yeah. Nice, nice. I still my my dad used to answer people like when he was at work and someone was talking to him, and in order, my dad was all about. Just trying to be white, trying to blend in with white America. And so when my dad would be talking to like construction people in order to make sure that the construction people knew that my dad was hearing him, my dad would always say, oh, yeah, 10-4, 10-4. I hear you, 10-4, 10-4, good buddy. Like he would talk in in like trucker speak. And yeah. it's gotten to the point where. Where like I don't even know that I'm saying it, but I say ten four all the time. Really? Yeah, and it's just a some sort of weird trucker thing I picked up from my dad, which is weird. The final street fight was choreographed by wrestler Terry Funk. Really? Okay. Fucking Terry Funk choreographed the end fight of Rocky Lee. And at first you go, what the fuck? But then you think of his career as a hardcore wrestler and you go, okay. Yeah, if you're going to have a street fight outside of a bar, <laughs> who better than Terry Funk? He was probably already drunk in the bar. Yeah. And they just went, hey, is, is any does anybody here have any fight experience? Well, I used to be NWA champion. <laughs> But yeah, Terry Funk did it. And you can kind of, when you know that and you see the fight, it's a different fight. Because at first it's like, hey, I'm punching you. Hey, I'm punching you. And then suddenly Rocky is doing like drop toe holds. Yeah. And like, like, like side suplexes and shit. And it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, Terry Funk. There you go. Terry Funk had a hand in this. It makes sense. It's weird. But yeah, Terry Funk, that's the only positive that I can say about this film. Because this movie freaking sucks. Yes, it does. And I hate it. Fuck this movie. People to go see people go and see Rocky movies to see a good, fun underdog story. But in this one, the dog gets put down. Yes. Rocky now, is down and out, but he triumphs in the end. Of all of the movies, you know, people didn't see Rocky's success in Rocky 2 and Rocky 3 and say, yeah, but I want to see him lose everything. MC Hammer style. Yeah. Well, that's it. I could, save you, I could save you the time of watching the first 15 minutes of this movie. Rocky gets stupid and poor again. That's it. Yes, Ivan Drago beat the respectability out of him. Yeah, what was the word that Mickey said? It, 
it can happen to any fighter. You became sophisticated? No. You, you became oh, what civilized. What did you say in Rocky Three? The worst thing happened to you. It could have happened to any fighter. You got... Not sophisticated, but it was something else. Wasn't civilized? Civilized? Yeah. It, but yeah, in civil. this film, Rocky is back to just being the dumb idiot palooka that he was in the first film. And second film. Yeah. Well, I, I never like, understood how, how the fuck he got know? smart to begin with. Yeah. No one thought that this film showcasing his fall from grace simply it no no one thought that like hey maybe we don't have to show Rocky's fall from grace but like this movie shouldn't exist period. This won't be the longest we spent discussing a Rocky movie because of this reason. <laughs> I don't like this film. It's the lowest uh, uh, box office for any Rocky movie. All five, six, all nine of them. This is the lowest box office that it ever had. I saw this movie the day it came out. I was in eighth grade. Really? It was November of the year 1990. Me and my friend Alex went to go see it. There were ads that would show all the yo's. They had TV commercials where it's like, yo, 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 Rocky Five, go for it. And it's like, wow, how many yo's are going to be in Rocky Five? Hey, let's all count. And I'm proud to say that the count that I had when I was in eighth grade was the same count that I had this time going over this freaking film with a fine tooth comb to count each and every single solitary yo. I, I know you got 18, but I went through this thing with a freaking, not a fine tooth comb, like a, like a, like a lice comb. That's what I went through this movie with, with the tiniest little lice comb. So, so what's My your final count? Is definitive this time. 18, no way. There were, there were like, Nine in the Christmas scene alone. I got I got six in the Christmas scene. Six? I I I, I have a running tally, and okay. I can tell you definitively when you really like listen to a scene two times and three times, you really pay attention. You really you don't even watch the film, you're just listening for the yells and pausing and rewinding. I guarantee you. 32. 32. I'm taking that as the official number. Yes. And it, we were both pretty high last week. I counted three in the director's cut. They were all from Polly. Yeah. They were all from Polly. I could have lived my whole life without seeing Sly Stallone's naked ass. I didn't need to see that. No. There's also the fact that... But um, he was going very Greek statue, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. He was going yeah. very classic. A bit marbleized, but not in a good way. The thing that I like is in the beginning, you see Tony Duke Evers, who is played by Tony Burton. He was the manager for Apollo Creed. And then Apollo Creed died, and in Rocky IV, he became uh, Rocky's manager. In Rocky V, he's only in the beginning, but he, he, very clearly, his name is Duke Evers. But in the, in the first scene, uh, Rocky's first line is like, Hey, Tony. Yeah, champ, what do you need? Get Adrian. And Tony runs off to get Adrian, and that's the last thing we see of Tony. His, his character's name is supposed to be Duke Evers, and the actor's name is Tony Burton. But in, I think, uh, either Rocky 
I, in Rocky Two, I think um, Apollo Creed accidentally calls Duke Everest Tony, and in Rocky Five, uh, Sylvester Stallone accidentally calls Duke Everest Tony. So they had to, and then in the next film, they call him Duke. So now you go to uh, Wikipedia, and his character is called Tony Duke Evers, and that Duke is his nickname. But that's really just some bullshit that they do because they fuck up his name in in a couple of different films. Okay, and I find that to be fascinating. Um, the first EO is three minutes in as a naked Rocky yells, "Yo, Tony!" A lot of times they're quick like that. They just yeah. like rush him. Yo, Tony. Um, but yeah, you mentioned this. Rocky is a dumb palooka with no brain in the first movie. And I said that the reason why he's a good boxer, he never covers his face. No. And it's like he's not covering his face because he, he can't get brain damage because he had no brain to begin with. But then in Rocky Three, he's all sophisticated and he has a brain and he's articulate. But apparently in Russia, Ivan Drago just knocked the brain out of him and he's back to being an effing idiot again. Yes, he's he is. wearing the stupid suit again and the hat and the freaking gloves and he's got the ball again. Like he just goes back to being a freaking idiot. Which leads me to to wonder. What the fuck have happened to his dog? Butt oh, kiss. But thank you. I, oh, that would have driven me insane. And we haven't seen the turtles in a while. But he does allegedly still have the turtles. Yeah. In real life. But I'm, I, one thing I will say, I'm excited to see where the podcast goes from here. Because I saw Rocky V the day it came out, and I hated it so much that when Rocky Balboa came out, I said, no, I am done with the entire Rocky franchise because Rocky V pissed me off that much. Yes. So then when Creed came out, I said I would see Creed, but in order to see Creed, I'd have to see all the other Rocky movies, including Rocky V, which fucking sucks, and I don't want to ever see that again. So I guess I'm not seeing Creed. And now people are saying that Creed 3 is one of the best movies of 2023. And so it's like, it, it, like we're going to get there. And I'm excited to see where uh, the rest of the Rocky film goes. The Rocky franchise. I'm excited to see uh, Rocky Balboa. And I'm excited to see the Creed series. Yeah. This Rocky. Is, I, I'm excited about that. Rocky Balboa would have been better if they didn't have a fight. The reason why Rocky Balboa, I think, exists is because um, uh, eventually Ro uh, Sylvester Stallone did come out and say, okay, uh, yeah, I've heard from a number of medical professionals, and I've heard from a lot of brain experts, and I've heard from a lot of sports athletes and I've heard from a lot of boxers so I would like to apologize for Rocky 5 because the damage the brain damage that Rocky gets would not kill him would not lead to permanent brain damage and most fighters who had that problem that Rocky has would be able after a while and with therapy to go back to fighting so okay. I feel like the movie Rocky Balboa only exists to sort of make up for the bullshit in Rocky V. Yeah, yeah. And there's also the fact that, yeah, he's like in his 40s and he's in his 50s in Rocky Balboa and he's going back to fight. And I remember at the... And I'm okay with that because I remember when George Foreman went back to fighting and he wasn't that bad. No. He was like a 40-year-old, 41-year-old fighting like uh, what, Buster Douglas and shit like that and managing to make it to the end of the fight. Sure, it became a decision where the judges gave the win to who's not George Foreman, but still, he stayed in there and was able to fight in his 
older years, and and so I I'm all right with Rocky Balboa. Yeah, as a movie. I'm also excited for the fact that apparently between Rocky V and Rocky Balboa, Adrian dies. And I'm really excited about that because I liked her in Rocky 1. I liked her a bit in Rocky 2. And in all the other films, she's just there to yell at Rocky when he's having problems. Yes, exactly. And I've gotten so freaking annoyed with Adrian, and I'm so excited for her to be dead. <laughs> well, it's just part of the Rocky formula now. <sighs> yep. Which Rocky Five doesn't follow the formula formula completely, but in, in which nobody died in this <clears> one. <throat> yeah. Uh, but other than that, we had the emotional, uh, the emotional Adrian scene. You know, we yeah. had the I'm afraid. You know that kind of or yeah. I'm gonna be a man or you know some of the whiny bullshit he's crying about. Uh. We had that. We had montages galore. Yeah. We had quite a few montages here. Plus, it really pisses me off that, like, I understand why Stallone did it. His son in this movie is played by his real-life son. Is it stage Stallone? So I can understand why Sylvester Stallone would cast his own son to play his son in this film where the son has more of an actual part in the film to play. But in Rocky four, which happened just days before Rocky five, your child is nine years old and now he is 14 a yes. few days later. So the only answer to this is, um, Sylvester Stallone's son has that disease that Robin Williams had in the movie Jack. Yes. He's got Jack disease. He's just jacking <laughs> the whole film. So that's something. I don't like the plot of this. I don't like the fall from grace. I don't like how dumb Rocky is. It suddenly is again. And Tommy Morrison cannot act his way out of a paper freaking bag. No. And I would be remiss if I didn't point this out. Tommy Gunn was played by Tommy Morrison, an actual boxer with a long career. We did a, a hap about him over three years ago. It was a shap entitled, yes. Does Tommy Morrison Have AIDS? It's a whole story that I do not want to get into right here. But... Tommy it's Morrison in the has had an odd boxing career. He may or may not have AIDS. It's a whole story. Um, what else? The worst crime of Rocky V is the Rocky V theme. Go for it. It sucks. It's lame. It's forgettable. It's not one tenth of an eye of a tiger. It's not even an 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 asshole of a tiger. Yeah. It's a toe of a tiger. And also in the original script, Rocky died at the end of the street fight, making this the clerks of the Rocky franchise. Yes. Somewhere out there in the multiverse, Rocky dies in Rocky V. So that's exciting. But I'm excited to see where the where the franchise goes from here. I'm excited to see what happens in Rocky Balboa. Have you seen Rocky Balboa? Yeah. Okay. Because I have not. So the rest of the Rocky franchise will be a blind watch for me. I am a bit worried to see young Jess from Gilmore Girls. Yeah. Although now he would be the dead dad from that show that everybody liked for This Is Us. Yeah. He's not a Jess from Gilmore Girls anymore. He's still that guy from Heroes for me. Yes, I totally forgot about Heroes. Yeah. Yeah. I just can't believe that that uh I think that the best thing in the world to ever happen on this podcast was uh Rory finally dumped Logan Huntsberger. Yeah. That was I'm a big deal. Team, 
I'm still Team Jess all the way. Yeah. To be clear. But I got a final count of 32 yo's in this film. 32 yo's. You really got to pay attention and stay on your toes with the yo's. I watched this film over and over again, rewinding scenes, listen, watching them repeatedly. And sometimes my wife was here and said, oh, there's one. And I'm like, are you sure I didn't hear it? Let me go back. Oh, you were right. Okay, I did miss that one. And fine tooth comb, I tell you, there are 32 yo's in Rocky V. Go for it. Okay. Have you seen any of the creeds, too? Have you seen all of I those? I have not seen any of the creeds. Okay, so I'm excited about that, too. I... It, it, I, I will say that Sylvester Stallone should get more credit. He, again, he wrote, produced, and uh, I don't think he directed this one, but he directed most of these Rockies. He wrote them all himself. He produced all of them himself. He starred all of them himself. Uh, only two other people can do that. Orson Welles and Ed Wood. Yes. And... Somewhere in the middle is Sylvester Stallone, and he should get credit for that. He also wrote uh, Rocky Balboa. I'm excited to get to the Creeds because the Creeds continues the Rocky story, but from a black perspective, and it's written, it, the, the Creed movies are written by someone who is not Sylvester Stallone. Cool. That's a big plus. And I'm excited. Yeah, that is a big plus. I'm, I'm excited to see a modern take on the Rocky franchise from someone who's not Sylvester Stallone. They did not cast him in Rocky in Creed 3, and Sylvester Stallone was pissed off about this because it is his baby. But also, I'm kind of excited to, find, to eventually get to a Rocky film without Rocky. Yeah. I, I, I feel bad saying that, but it's the truth. I, I'm so happy to have gotten to the end of Rocky V. Fuck this movie. Stallone I, just needs to hang it up now. I mean, he's <clears throat> he could barely act to begin with. Now he's just showing up and shit being Stallone. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah, I saw... Um, I, I saw the new Indiana Jones movie, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. It's fine. It's better than the Crystal Skull, and that's all that matters. That's what I'm hearing. But it's also... In the beginning, like the first 20 minutes, is a pitch-perfect, computer-generated young Harrison Ford in World War II, and it looks amazing. It looks incredible. It doesn't have that uncanny valley look that they that they get sometimes, like in the Marvel movies where they de-age someone. It looks perfect. It looks 100% like young Harrison Ford, but then he opens his mouth, and they have modern-day Harrison Ford voicing him, and that's where it fucks up. Oh. Because it's... Perfect. It looks exactly like young Harrison Ford. Ten minute young warning. Harrison Ford from 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 Raiders of the Lost Freaking Ark. It looks just like him. But then he opens his mouth and says, "Yup, it's me, young Harrison Ford." And it's like, fuck, you couldn't digitize his voice in any way. <laughs> it, the movie is fine, but I saw a preview before that for the Expendables Four. Oh god! And Stallone is in the Expendables Four. I've never seen any of the Expendables movies, but you know what they're calling Expendables Four? What? Expend Four Bulls. Oh god! E X P E N D Four B L E S. The number four Expend Four Bulls, and I. It says something about the new Indiana Jones movie that I was watching the film and going, this is pretty good. This is pretty fun. Expend four bulls? Expend four bulls. Expend four bulls. Oh, okay, whatever. Okay. So, um, Indiana Jones is running. Hey, why, why couldn't they get 
uh, Waymond Wang to be in this film? Why isn't he in this? Why didn't they get Short Round to be in this film? Yeah. The expend verbals? That is the worst! Anyway. Arr, 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 eating the popcorn. Expend horribles. And again, he's just Stallone in that movie. Yeah. He's just Sylvester Stallone. So, I mean, you week, know, I mean, you're still trying to pull off the tough guy thing, and I appreciate that, but, like, I know your nipples are hanging around your belly button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm so. I wouldn't be surprised if he tries to do another Rocky after Creed Three. Yeah. I don't know what it would be, but I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a film where Rocky literally dies, because that's how serious he takes this series. I would not be surprised if he did that. Rocky battles yeah. back after accidentally sitting on his testicles. Yeah. The rock, it, it, at the end of Rocky 10, Rocky battles uh, the kids who threw a frisbee into his backyard. Yeah. This is mine now. Because Mickey loves me. <laughs> so next week, I say next week, but in two weeks from now, will be episode 459. We will be watching Rocky Balboa, me for the first time. I'm really excited to watch it. We will also be discussing Bobby Bonilla Day, which I'm very excited to talk about. I was going to talk about it today, but I decided instead to make this some of the easiest writing I've ever had to do because I could rip Rocky Five a new asshole in my sleep. Uh, and thank you, Max, for just being here by my side. For the entire time. It's been very comforting. Having you on my shoulder. For this entire thing. You're like a, you're like a Jiminy Cricket. In Pinocchio. Or, or uh, in uh, Puss in Boots. The Last Wish. We're, I'm taking the kids. To uh, kids summer movies. You know how every summer they do like uh like cheap movies for kids at the theater. Yeah. Uh, last Wednesday we went to go see Puss in Boots: The Last Wish, and I would have seen that in theaters before now if someone had just told me Florence Pugh plays Goldilocks. Really. And uh, Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows plays a uh, uh, chihuahua. If someone had just told me those two things, I would have seen it the day it freaking came out. <laughs> Florence Pugh plays Goldilocks. You had me at Florence Pugh. Yes. I was really happy to see that in theaters. And they do a Mexican mariachi version of the Doors song The End. Really? In a kid's movie. They do not get to the father, yes, son, I want to kill you part. Surprise. But, uh, but yeah, it, you had me there, too. But it was in Boots the Last Wish. I would go see that again instead of yeah. going to see the Indiana Jones movie if I, if, I, if I really had, if I had to be honest about it. The Indiana Jones movie, it's fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's a popcorn muncher. And all Indiana Jones movies aim to be that, where it's like plot, 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 action sequence. Plot, 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 action sequence. Because they, they're they still, the Indiana Jones movies still in their heart are just modern day serials. So every 20 minutes, ooh, how will our hero get out of this one? Tune in, same bat time, same bat channel, except it's not a serial. Here's how he gets out. And so there's a lot of like popcorn munching scenes, but I don't know. Harrison Ford's like 300 years old. Yes. So. Yes, he is. That's why I have fine. problems with him as Thunderbolt Ross, too. Yeah. I was going to go see the Indiana Jones movie again tomorrow, but it's like, Fuck that. I'm just going to go see Spider-Verse again. 
would rather see that in theaters again than the new Indiana Jones movie, which doesn't say a lot for the new Indiana Jones movie. But yes, let me let me wrap this next week. Rocky Balboa. We continue our summer of yo. After that, we will be taking a break with Boxing Helena. So, uh, okay. positive. I don't know how many yo's are going to be in Boxing Helena, but I think we'll be lucky if we get one. But I yeah. don't think there's going to be a lot of yo. I'm going to touch up. I don't think that happens in Boxing Helena. I don't think so. Uh, and Bobby Bonilla Day. Excited to talk about the life and uh, the legacy of Bobby Bonilla. But that's next week. Now that I look back at this week, the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, Robin Williams and Jack. Uh, uh, Terry Funk. I still can't believe that. No. If anything, people should go back and watch the final fight in Rocky Five, knowing that a hardcore ECW wrestler choreographed it because the fight kind of makes more sense after that. Uh, Pride Fest, BBC, Giant Wheels of Cheese. I got to say, I think this has been a pretty fun episode of the podcast. This has been a damn good episode. Yes, I agree. I felt the same way, but, you know, this is. I feel that you're the one who makes that distinction and not me, and I don't ever want to step on anybody's toes. I always consider myself to be a burden. I always consider, I always assume that everyone hates me. It, I'm in therapy, and hmm. uh, my therapist has been helping me a lot with that, but yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. Look at the camera. Start moving your mouth. And on be and on be and I am and Maylin and on behalf of uh, Maxwell and Natasha and Eleanor and everybody else in the house. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens, and and you douche waffles and poopy toes. Yes. Douche waffles is just a really great bad word that we have come up with it as a family. So that, and then poopy toots is uh, our kids' way of saying pop darts. <laughs> it also sounds vaguely bad. Um, uh, uh, douche waffles and poopy toots. Well, and no. If you if you remember, if you remember, douche waffle was technically Mal's catchphrase. Yes. And poopy toots was Maxwell's catchphrase. But Maxwell nice. would never say it. So yeah, Mal Maxwell always Mal said it changes for catchphrases him. every episode. Uh yeah, okay. Do 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 skitty pop a doo wow cut and print. Oh, print it on a cookie. That's a wrap.